Well folks, we finally made it. Took a little longer than expected, few hiccups along the way, but the all new Digital Trend Studios is open for production. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and I am really excited to show you our new digs. Now, if you're not caught up, we recently published a video called I'm Leaving, which sorry but not sorry for the clickbait. I don't get to do that kind of thing very often, you know what I'm saying? So I just had to do it. As far as I'm aware, nobody actually had a heart attack Thank goodness. Anyway, uh, the TLDW, uh, too long didn't watch on that video, is that we left our headquarters of 15 years and had an opportunity to build a new content production studio from the ground up. We took you to the new space, which at the time was basically a concrete bunker. Lots of potential, uh, but as all diamonds in the rough are, needs a lot of work to get it where we want it. Well, we've done that work, we're finally done, we are mostly done. There are a couple of spaces in here that aren't completed just yet, but better to do it right than rush it. You know what I'm saying? All in service of providing the best, most beautiful content we possibly can for you. But also full transparency, we have a lot of thanks to give out to all the folks who partnered with us to make this vision a reality. Extra big thanks though goes to you. You're the folks who really made this all possible for us. So. Thank you so much for your support over the years. Thank you for your patience as we got this job done. Uh, we're ready to go back to regular production. But before we get back to the grind, let me take you on a little tour. And we don't have to travel far because the first thing I wanna show you is right behind me. This is our acoustic slat wall. This stuff is super popular right now. No doubt you've seen it on Instagram. And I definitely wanted that look, but I also needed the slat wall to provide some acoustic benefits as well. So I was super picky about which panels we ordered for this wall. I needed it to actually do something in terms of absorbing sound. And that required not just a little thin felt on the backing, but something thick and substantial. I definitely feel like I made the right choice because this is doing some amazing things for the sound of this room. It's actually going to help improve the overall audio fidelity of the speakers and sound bars that I listen to in here. But we didn't just slap it up on the wall. We actually furred out by about three inches, which provided a few different advantages. One, it's hiding a fire alarm that was a real eyesore. Don't worry, we can still hear it. But also, being furred out from the wall provides a little bit more acoustic insulation between us and the folks on the other side of the wall. And it also catches any sound from the back as well as from the front, which is a principle we'll talk about more in just a little bit. I do love the way it looks. I think it provides a great amount of contrast for the speakers and the TVs we put in front of it, but we're not done with it just yet. We're actually going to be adding LED strips to the back to uh, help add a little bit of glow. And I think that's just gonna level things up even more. Sticking with that acoustics theme, if you remember from the I'm Leaving video, this place was an acoustic nightmare. Well, you can probably hear it very well right now. It was basically an echo chamber with decay times reaching into like five or six seconds. And that's just no good. Not only does it make my voice sound terrible for these videos, but it has a really negative impact on TV sound, speaker sound, the sound bars we're reviewing, basically all audio equipment would be seriously negatively impacted by all that echo. So we had to get rid of it. And for that, we brought in a professional acoustician. I introduced him in the previous video. That would be Phil Allen with a Sound Palace Design who came in here and did an absolutely excellent job completely transforming the way this place sounds and feels. In total, we have 16 four foot by four foot, four inch deep acoustic panels filled with rock wool composite material that's designed to absorb sound. Now, we put some along the walls up toward the top. Most of the time, you're not gonna see those in the shot, but the real key was to get them mounted to the ceiling. And as you can see here, they're suspended just a couple of inches below the surface of the ceiling, which once again, doesn't just catch the direct uh, sound, but it also captures any reflections coming from the ceiling itself. And folks, I cannot overstate just how amazing the end result has been. This room is super quiet. In fact, we're using a shotgun mic right now so that you can hear that the effect of the room on my voice is 
basically nothing. Now, it's not a totally dead anechoic chamber in here. Uh, you don't actually want that, especially when you're reviewing audio gear, but it has just enough life without any of the mess, and it's been a joy. I took a chance to talk with Phil after the work was done, and, and here's what we talked about. And we're back with Phil Allen of Sound Palace Design. So first of all, Phil, I just wanna make a couple of comments to you. Um, I really appreciate the fact that you were super responsive to all my annoying questions. I mean, this was my first time going through anything like this. Uh, so thank you for being patient with me. That was, that was a huge part of this whole process. I just had a complete confidence uh, after we you know, ran through some stuff and you yeah. addressed some of my concerns. So thank you for that. That was awesome. That was huge. And I think it would be huge for anybody who needs your services. But also, you guys came in here and just took care of business. I was actually shocked at how quickly you guys were able to move on this. Also, it was, no lie, kind of fun to have you in here. We had some fun yeah. while you were hanging out. You, uh, you were uh, easy to work with, great to be around. With all of that said, I know how I feel about uh, what happened here and the, the end result of the work that you did. How do you feel about it? I mean, you do this for a living. You've been in a lot of different spaces and you've converted them. Um, how do you how do you think it turned out? You know, we we try to do a lot of restaurants and other venues that don't really require as much acoustical treatment. And for this one, we're just kind of like, let's go all in and get the best sound we can on here. And it's kind of like library like in here. And you can actually feel how quiet it is in here. That's the thing. Um, you know, somebody commented the other day, they walked in here and they felt like you could actually feel the difference. That is 100% true. And then, I mean, as a personal testimonial, as I'll talk about more later in this video, um, it has transformed the way speakers sound. It's transformed the way uh, our voice audio right now sounds. In fact, right. intentionally not using clip-on lav microphones, we're using one that is going to catch whatever room noise there is, of which there is little to none. Um, so, man, I just want to say thank you. It turned out great. Uh, your recommendation on both the size of the panels and the placement uh, worked out awesome. And, you know, have uh, how often do you do these acoustic slap walls that we um, have behind I, us? We kind of just started doing them this year because they seem to be trending pretty hard. Um, easy to install. Most, most people can do them. But, yeah, we can definitely consult you on that and get you the right things for it. Really, really stoked. Uh, thanks again for your great service. You. Really appreciate it. This has been an amazing process. And even more amazing than that is the finished product, how this room yeah. sounds. Appreciate it so much, man. Awesome. Thank you. You bet. With the acoustic stuff taken care of, the next most crucial aspect to this space was going to be the furniture. By far, the most asked about, the most commented upon fixture in our videos has been the BDI Corridor Media Console. Now, when it came to designing this new space, I went straight to BDI to see how we could work together, and boy, did they come through. BDI sent us four beautiful pieces so far, and all they asked for in exchange was for me to talk about them uh, in this video, which is 100% my pleasure because I really legitimately love this stuff. We have two media consoles here. One is from the Octave collection, and the other here is from the Elements collection. First of all, we needed media consoles that were going to be big enough to handle the large size TVs and the absolutely monstrous sound bars like the Nakamichi Dragon that we're often reviewing here. They need to be solid enough to hold that stuff safely, and they need to be rugged enough for us to put stuff on and take it off constantly. But the design elements here that really make my everyday life easier are the ventilation that these offer as well as the cable management and the access. Cable management is a breeze because there are multiple ways to route wires among the different compartments in the cabinet as well as in and out of the back of the cabinet. There's enough space for a super long power strip so Power access is never a problem, even if I have like 15 pieces of gear that I have to plug in. And these media consoles are actually on wheels as well, so that I can easily pull them out and then push them back in without any hassle whatsoever. Behind each door is an acoustically transparent screen, so I can put speakers in these cabinets if I want to. Usually I'm gonna put a center channel in there. And again, guys, the build quality is second to none, and they arrived mostly assembled. All we had to do was put the legs on each 
each one and that was it. There was no long protracted two hour Ikea nightmare style assembly involved with these things. Now aesthetically, we went with the Elements and the Octave because I think they provide very different looks. The Octave in particular has sort of a retro console vibe, whereas the Elements looks a little bit more modern. And having two of them is clutch because we're able to put them right next to each other and we can compare two 85 inch TVs if we want to side by side, no problem at all. Now, while I was talking to BDI about the media consoles, they also offered to send a coffee table. And I thought, great, that makes a whole lot of sense. That'll fit right into the space. We could use one of those. But folks, I cannot tell you how this has become my favorite piece of furniture in this space. It is of exceptional build quality, just like the media consoles. It's actually a pretty stout and stable coffee table. But my favorite part is the lift top. Now the surface of the lift top is the same smoked glass that you find on top of the BDI corridor cabinet, which I learned from experience was surprisingly scratch resistant. No matter what happens to the top of this thing, you just wipe it down with a wet cloth and it's like it's brand new. Folks, I cannot tell you how much I've enjoyed sitting here and working at this table from the couch uh, without having to crane my neck and shoulders and get all sore working from a lower slung coffee table. Not only that, but it's offering me a bunch of storage underneath, which allows me to put a bunch of the remotes and this laptop away and pull it out when I actually need it. I'm not kidding. This is like my favorite piece of furniture in here and it is absolutely outstanding. The other thing that you need to know about this table is that the uh, lifting mechanism is super smooth hydraulics. Uh, it's very stable, very easy. It doesn't just slam shut. It doesn't just pop open. Uh, you can lift it and put it back down with one hand. If you have any experience with these lift top style tables from other manufacturers, you know they don't exactly work as you hope they would. This one though absolutely does. The final piece that BDI sent is this, the Serif laptop table, which you can lift up to varying degrees of height. I've been using this for calibrating TVs. I'm usually struggling with where to put my laptop. Uh, there's never a good place for it. So it's come in clutch for that. But this is actually intended to go in the bedroom. Like you can slide the base right under your bed and work from your bed. It's part of BDI's new bedroom collection, moving out of the living room into the bedroom. And that's a little bit of a tease for some new things to come in a future video. Again, huge shout out to BDI for their generosity. It is so very much appreciated. Uh, now let me take you for a little bit of a tour around the room. We'll start over here with basically an equipment rack. Uh, we actually painted the wall black here and went with the black equipment rack because um, ultimately, we're going to have some dark gray or black bins here to organize all of our stuff. Battery chargers, batteries, tripods, C-stands, uh, camera gear, that kind of stuff. There's not a lot of storage space uh, in this space, so we needed a place where we could put just about everything that we needed for everyday work. That's this space right here. Next up, I want to take you to uh, currently fairly ugly part of the room. You guys remember the garage door from the uh, I'm Leaving video. This garage door is huge for us because it allows me to get TVs and other big gear in and out of here very quickly. That used to be like a 30 minute process at the other building. The only problem with this garage door is that it lets in a ton of light, which is nice just for living, but for video production is definitely far from ideal. Obviously, we have had to come up with a very temporary solution of clamping moving blankets up on this so that we could control some of the light that was uh, coming out of this. Ultimately, what I'm gonna need to do is black out each of the nine garage window panes so that no light come through at all. When we're doing uh, TV comparisons and we have to bring the light down in here, we can't have anything seeping through or else it's gonna show up on the TV screen. So light control is super, super important. Then we're going to put blackout curtains in front of that as much for sound absorption as it's going to be for aesthetics. You know, just kind of hide the garage door a little bit. This is not the only temporary light abatement fix that we have going on here either. There's one more. We have a skylight uh, 14 feet up uh, in the air, as a matter of fact, uh, that lets in a ton of light that was also causing us a little bit of a problem. So right now, again, with the clipped black felt, 
up there blocking out the skylight light. We have some blinds coming in. They're gonna be motorized blinds so that I can just use voice control to open and close them. Uh, that's another unfinished element that I'm looking forward very much uh, to getting fixed. Now, let's take a little turn around the corner here and check out the new A-roll setup. Okay, so I'm a little bit proud of this. I set this all up so that with the flick of a switch, everything powers on. And there's quite a bit here to show you. Um, when we got to set up our A-roll background from scratch, I really wanted to do something that was a reflection of myself and my own interests as well as the mission of Digital Trends. Plus, we wanted it to look good. So what we have here is a combination of old and new tech stuff. Um, we've got a Dynaco ST70 tube amplifier here. This thing sounds amazing. I absolutely love it. Uh, we also have an old Dynaco 120 uh, solid state amplifier with the LS50 Wireless 2 from KEF. Uh, these speakers are also functional, self-powered. We've got some Klipsch headphones here. I'm gonna change out this album, so keep an eye out for that. It's a little Easter egg type of thing. We're gonna have different album art here for every single video that we do. Just a small portion of my vinyl collection, uh, along with some more Dynaco stuff. Uh, I love this stuff, this old vintage uh, audio stuff sounds spectacular. We've got a tube preamp, a solid state preamp, as well as an FM tuner. And then uh, down below, you'll see that we have these LED panels. This helps us light from the ground up so that we get a glow on all of this stuff without having to directly light it. And I think that it looks fantastic. Couple more things to show you. And for that, we need to head upstairs. So this loft space is just super fun to have in general, but it's also a big part of our production plans. Right now I have a Sony A95K QD OLED here, but we'll be swapping various TVs through this space uh, in preparation for testing. I'm really looking forward to using this space for soundbar testing as well. We'll be testing soundbars down in the main area as well, but uh, doing it up here gives us an opportunity to test how soundbars do in a slightly smaller space. Also, having close proximity to the ceiling gives us a better way to test the Dolby Atmos capability of Atmos capable soundbars. So that's gonna be a big part of what we're doing up here. But we also have a great workstation that is going to double as another set. We've also set up a double duty workstation up here so Chris can be editing something while Zeke is shooting with me if we want. We've got the SVS Prime Wireless Pro speakers along with the subwoofer available here for better sound. We also have a great BenQ monitor, uh, very color accurate, so uh, really helps out when we're color grading our content here. But this is also a space where we can shoot laptop and monitor reviews in addition to all of the work that we'll be doing up here. Yeah, so that's the tour of the space as it is now and we've got more great things cooked up for this place. We're partnering with Rode, for instance, to get a binaural audio set up so that we can actually share with you some of what we're actually hearing in this space and add a little bit to our speaker and soundbar reviews. Uh, we're partnering with Monoprice on several different things. We already use Monoprice HDMI cables exclusively, uh, but we've got some power solutions, some cable management, and some other really fun stuff coming through that. Uh, sky's the limit. Grind starts now. The next video you see from us will be the TCL QM8 versus the Hisense U8K. Can't wait to share that with you. For now, I'm going to sign off. Thank you for joining us uh, on this little tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about what you saw and maybe about what you would like to see in the future. Uh, and I'll definitely check it out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.